Hi, uh, my name is Thea Touchton. I'm Stuart Todd Martin. My name is Brian Sid Borrero. Anna Ross. Hi, I'm Darius Nile. Hello, my name's Jennifer Mims. Hey, my name is Mackenzie Loren. Sasha Jure, and I came from Europe, from Poland. And grew up on the south side of Chicago. I'm originally from Odessa, Texas. I spent some time in Rochester, New York. From Waterloo, Iowa. That's where I grew up. Puerto Rico, born and raised. And I am from Toronto, Canada. Um, I'm originally from northern Minnesota, Duluth. I'm from Corpus Christi, Texas. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona originally. Amarillo, Texas, and from there I moved to Burbank, California. I've been here about a year and seven months. I came to this land of dream, follow my personal dreams. regarding my singing music to become an actress. I moved to Los Angeles when I was 18 in hopes of becoming a model and I also got into acting while I was out here. I fell in love with that and that is now my main focus. I'm an actress, have always been since I was three years old. And I've done an average of four to five plays a year on the stage. Also, I'm a screenwriter. Well-trained actor who has more than a half century of experience. I write poetry, I compose the music, I'm a songwriter, and I'm a good actor. And I came to LA years ago to be in the movies. Um, I didn't really have a lot of friends growing up, and I was uh, kind of a geek had really bad acne and uh, I wore glasses and I was in show choir and I had a lot of friends so I watched a lot of movies and you know I didn't see a future for myself in Minnesota. Boy I got a, a handful of stories to tell for this project. And um, I got a story to tell. <laughs> oh, wow. So once upon a time, I <laughs> decided to move to Los Angeles and it was easily the best I've ever felt in my entire life. My family spent so much money getting me into this industry because they believed in me so much. And I know that not many artists have that advantage. I really was focused on making it all happen to thank my parents and show them that I was going to take advantage of every opportunity. I was raised by very abusive parents. Um, I was thrown out a window by my mother, my real mother, and my neck gets crooked. So I secretly dreamed of being in the movies, like I wanted to be like Indiana Jones and uh, you know, all the people I look up to, Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt. and. Uh, I was given a full scholarship after high school to the Actors Studio in New York, and my parents tore it up and threw it in the garbage, and uh, my mother basically said uh, she had some sort of inn in Hollywood, I don't know what, but that she would put a curse on me if I tried to become an actress, and I would never succeed at it. And uh, so I did it. I hopped on a Greyhound after graduating high school with two backpacks, and uh... I have a one-way ticket to L.A. and I started from downtown L.A. Greyhound Station and from there I found some cots to sleep on in Hollywood at a hostel and from there I made my way in. So I'm out here, I'm ready to go, I want to be in movies, I want to be on TV, I want to be in commercials, I want to be in industrial videos, I want to be everywhere. And So the, later I got married and uh, majored, oh actually I majored in theater and English literature. I have four beautiful children. Then I moved to L.A. Um, several years ago, and uh, I got my... And um, I lived in Hollywood for a long time, bouncing around. I slept on floors, I slept on couches. I did everything I could to make it. Um, I had to work other jobs a lot. I've been fired from every job I've ever had, other than acting. And I have tried. <laughs> it makes me cry. <laughs> I worked a lot of restaurant jobs at first. That's all I could get. I was a host at a waiter. I was a bar back. I worked at a hip hop nightclub. I was the only white boy there. Very hard work. I cleaned up puke for 4.75 an hour sometimes. I've been in choir since I was five. I've always been on stage. 
I'm kind of the entertainment that the auditorium comes to see. I didn't realize that was a good thing because I got teased a lot back in Minnesota about that, but when I came to California, they welcomed it. I still do it every day, a barbershop quartet, and now I write my own stuff and sing a cappella in the streets, but still acting is my main passion, so I've only made paychecks off of being an actor so far. Anyway, so um, when I first got to town, I met this woman who said she was a manager, and um, she had a, a, a headshot photographer that I had to use, and she sent me out on several good good auditions, really good ones. And um, I had already chosen, and she said, no, 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 you can't use him. So uh, basically, I got her, I used her men, and I paid her eventually, between her and her man, uh, over $500. And that was a lot for me, because back in those days, I was only making like 600 a month. <laughs> So that was uh, my rent, utilities, everything. So that was it. Somehow I wound up into extra work the first six months I was here and got all my vouchers to join SAG and got a part in a movie uh, by the end of summer. My first summer here, I was in a Jim Carrey movie and uh, that's how it all started. And from there, I've been trying to work up ever since. I wanted to be able to say that I did it on my own. So I would sleep in my car, um, which was not smart, but I did and wouldn't tell them about it. I like to do everything on my own. And so when I had this opportunity to meet a talent manager, he would take me out on dinners and say, hey, hey, this is like a networking thing, so I'm gonna introduce you to these people and they might like your look or something like that. This was a whole new life for me. So I thought, wow, this is really cool. My parents would be so proud. I'm going to all these networking dinners and meeting all these big people. And I think that's what the scariest part was, was some of the people that I were meeting were legitimate people in the industry. They were big names. And I felt like, okay, this is it. This was meant to happen. My manager just wanted me to go to these dinners to make him look good. I noticed that things were getting kind of weird because he was trying to spend a lot of time with me and during late hours of the night as i continued to meet up with this manager he would take it a little bit too far and a couple times he actually went for it and kissed me and it was really weird and i backed up because keep in mind this talent manager was easily in his late 50s mind you i was 18. So this was really, really odd. I've never had any kind of reaction like that before with um, an older man. And I thought that that was really weird, but I don't want to disappoint my family and because I want to make this happen and I don't want to say anything and ruin my chances of really making something happen because he, he did introduce me to these big names. So I felt pressured um, kind of by myself and and definitely by him. He asked me if he could come to my apartment to see my new place and then it was really weird because when he did, he would sit down next, next to me on the couch and here I am just being naive and innocent and thinking, oh yeah, look at my new place and I'm so stoked. This is my LA apartment, it's so cool. And he just came and sat next to me and was like, yeah, yeah, like not even really listening to me. And I could tell. And I was like, yeah, it's kind of weird. But, you know, I'm just the kind of person that always wanted to give people the benefit of the doubt. So he would just like scoot closer to me and closer to me. And so I would just be like, huh, you know, and kind of scoot away. Well, I'll call this one the, um, I was on a, a, a TV show. <laughs> yeah, basically the producers think that we have no rights. Since more than 90% of my 500 plus jobs have paid me late. Well, they had invited me to move from the East Coast and said, look, you belong in Hollywood. If you come out here, uh, you can study with me for five months free and while you get on your feet. It's generous, right? That's how it seemed to me and spoke to me and picked up and moved to uh, the West Coast and ended up sleeping on floor of his office for a couple of months. Uh, I, I was in a class. It almost occurred like he, he was more engaging in psychoanalysis than any kind of teaching of acting. He was a method instructor. 
studied with Lee Strasberg for about two seconds and then uh, declared himself uh, a master and expert on all things Strasbergian. He'd sit in this chair in the very front of the class and it looked like some kind of modified barber chair that was on wheels. So you could wheel it around. It was too heavy to lift up on the stage, but apparently he sat there because it was comfortable and he held court in it and he could turn since it was like a modified barber chair somewhat. It's like he could rotate around to talk to the class and then rotate back to critique the um, student. It was as if he was trying to peg people rather than help them act. And and it became this kind of bizarre, he's in charge and he's going to psychoanalyze you. Well, one day he told me in front of the whole class, you know, your problem is that you're really gay and you're trying to make yourself make it with women. You know, it's like, you know, you prefer steak, but you're trying to make yourself eat fish. Well, fast forward 28 years later, uh, my wife and I have now been married for over 22 years. We have two kids. But at the, at the time, you could imagine just how, whether I was gay or not, which I must not be. It's when I was willing to leave class to do a movie for free that I, I got. And there is where I got a lot of my training. I believe uh, doing it is where you really become who you want to be. And that's where I really got all my training. I don't believe acting class is necessary. I believe it's a business out here and and people put you down and they rip you to shreds and I'll never have another acting teacher again. I'll never have another coach again. I learned everything I need to learn by doing projects for free. Talk about passion. People have passion when they do it for free or very little money. That's where it's at. That's what Tom Cruise did. That's what Hilary Swank did. She won two Oscars. She never had an acting class in her life. She couldn't afford it. Uh, so I continue to shoot my dream. I continue to go for bigger parts. Right now I don't have an agent, like always, so I'm doing it myself. And now looking back, I realize through seeing a lot of other girls that are my age that have fallen into that trap, except it's sad because a lot of girls know what they're doing and they're still okay with it because they just want to live this Marilyn Monroe lifestyle. But I don't think women understand. They don't need to do that and women don't need to appear provocative to get what they want because damn it we're so strong we can accomplish anything on our own and we don't need any man to do it and that's that's what i'm going to stand by for the rest of this journey whether i make it or not but i know i will because i'm different i'm a leader and you know i don't regret any of those things happening to me because Had they not happened, I would still be naive to what really goes on in this industry. And it's sickening and it's disgusting, but I love what I do so much. Nothing's ever going to come in between me and my goal. I mean, I will not say this is the only story that I have where I felt like I was taken advantage of. And what's really sad is that I think this just happens on the regular. I would be shocked if you could find an actress who feels like she's never been treated in an inappropriate way or taken advantage of. I hope that this project gets really widely seen because I think this is a great idea. We need something like this because the entertainment industry, so much of this kind of stuff happens. And I think a lot of people aren't aware or understand how scary it is to say, to or like how, how difficult it is to say no when the power dynamic is, is such that you feel like you're in a lower rank. It was extremely, uh dehumanizing and humiliating. As I look back on it, really Evan was looking for a way in to humiliate people so he could have power over them. So eventually it was just getting to the point where I was like, okay, I can't be stupid and I want this really bad and I'm gonna find another way because I, there, this isn't right. And, uh, I really would like to be part of it. I just.
I just came here to have a hope, like somebody's gonna recognize when I stand in front of you. And I hope somebody's gonna listen to me. Anyway, have a good day. Bye. I hope somebody's gonna listen to my story. So I came here to be in the movies, and I'm still doing it. That's where I got my first part, and I believe that's where I'm destined to be. And that's where I keep pushing a problem. So I've had to do a lot of free work. And that's where I really learned how to love acting, was in my free work. I went to acting classes. I paid 300 bucks a month. I worked two jobs to do that. And you know, I learned how to act, but ultimately, I don't believe it does anything. Either you're an actor or you're not. It's that simple. If I extended my toe in my pantyhose and let him lie underneath it, like with his face, and basically just like put my toe in his mouth or put my like foot on his face, and I was so uncomfortable. I mean, the way this was like a big guy, and I was really scared at the time, and I didn't know how to say no properly, and I, was, I absolutely did not want to do it. And it was really uncomfortable, and I really hated it, and I was so scared. Like, you know what? I'm not feeling really good. I made up some excuse like that, and I left. And I just got in my car, drove a little bit away, and just cried. Because I felt so used and taken advantage of, and I was disappointed in myself for not standing up for myself and saying, no, you know, I don't want to do that. That's not what I'm here to do. And then I just, I just, it was, it was a horrible, horrible experience. And it made me, I guess, the tiny little silver lining is that it made me more careful and more cautious and more wary of, of jobs and gigs and people and companies and their intentions. But, I mean, this kind of stuff happens a lot. So I went on to Model Mayhem, and one of the first jobs that I booked was with a photographer whose name I'm a little hesitant to say. Kind of scared. Um, but I worry about my own safety if this person were to see this and then come after me, I get, I mean, he hits me. So we're shooting for a little bit, things are fine. I'm a little nervous at first because when I get there, it's sort of, it's a little out of the way, like it's not really near other houses. It looks almost like a shed that's been converted into sort of a studio space. But when you're inside the studio, it does look more normal. So it's a little worried for a second there, but everything still seemed fine. This man seemed professional. And so we were taking photos, and I was in the heels or stilettos. They were usually stilettos. And he started wanting to take close-ups of my feet. And I'm like, okay, that's that's cool. So we'll do some close-ups of feet. And it was starting, at this point, I'm like, this is a little weird, but I'm kind of new, and I don't feel like I'm in a personal danger right now. This is just a little weird, but I can handle this. This is fine. And it sort of goes on like that, like a little push further, a little push further, a little push further, until the point where I'm uncomfortable and he wants me to be in pantyhose and he wants me to have, he sets up the camera and he explains to me, he sets it up at foot level height and he explains to me that um, 